and we back. Now I gotta admit to y'all that being an NBA fan right now is um it's pretty terrible because we're finally in that dead period of the year where summer league is over, free agency is practically over, and nothing is going on. And that's probably why you see some of your favorite NBA YouTubers taking a step back and not uploading as much because there's not anything to talk about. When for AC here, we can talk about, oh, how's LeBron going to fit in that lane? Why did Paul George resign? But all of those stories are over. And now we got to wait. And you know how you know it's a struggle. We're waiting for the NBA preseason. I got this timer here. We are six weeks, four days, six hours, 14 minutes and 8 seconds away from the first preseason game. And that preseason game is between the Charlotte Hornets and the Boston Celtics. Realistically, if this was a regular season game, I'm probably not even watching it. But since it's going to be the first bit of basketball we've had in like two months, I'm going to be watching like it's the NBA Finals. And right now I'm struggling, man, because a man can only watch so many Derrick Rose highlights before he needs something new to watch. 10 points, 3 assists. And Chicago with a 26 18 Rose came down bad on his left foot. See him holding on to his knee, holding on to his knee and down. So today we're taking a step back from doing something usual on this channel. We're just going to be talking about some of my favorite stories that's going around the NBA right now. First, let's start off with some wholesome news. Let's talk about Donovan Mitchell for a second. Before Donovan Mitchell decided definitely to declare for the draft, he said he spent a lot of time trying to figure out if he should go back to college. Think about that. Donovan Mitchell could have went back to college, but instead he declared for the draft, and now he's one of the best young up-and-coming players in the league. Now, we're not talking about him on the court right now. Let's talk about what he's been doing off the court. Now, NBA players are notorious for being kind of generous and charitable and everything, but Donovan Mitchell has been helping fans left and right around Utah. First, it started about a week ago. He was in the Apple store. He heard somebody that couldn't really afford to get their phone fixed, and Donovan Mitchell's like, I got you, brother, and he paid for it, but that's not it. Just a few days ago, there was a young fan that saw him at Cheesecake Factory. She walked up, asked for his autograph. But not only did Donovan Mitchell give an autograph, he went to his car, got a pair of shoes, and signed those for her. She's also battling cancer, so I hope this helps her throughout her journey and everything. But let's talk about Cheesecake Factory. A few years ago, NBA players were given a survey about their favorite restaurants in each NBA city, and Cheesecake Factory came out on top like 90% of the time. So, if you really want to meet an NBA player, go to a city and eat at Cheesecake Factory. If you do not believe me, it happened to me. I was in Milwaukee for a Boston Celtics Milwaukee Bucks game for the playoffs. Just went to the Cheesecake Factory to have dinner with my girlfriend. And guess who walked through the door? Thon Maker and Malcolm Brogdon. This is just great team defense, and then one-on-one, -on -one, when I get beat, I'm not giving up. <laughs> That's Don Maker. That's... We're sitting next to Don Maker, who just had the biggest game of his career, like, yesterday. What? I, you, can't, you can't do anything, right? Nobody else has walked up to him, so it's not like I... What? See, Cheesecake Factory is great because they got this menu of what seems like a thousand things. So no matter what you like, Cheesecake Factory got it. And you can potentially, if you're at the right place at the right time, meet NBA players. Next, Carmelo Anthony is officially a part of the Houston Rockets. But that's not the news. We've known that for a few weeks now. The big news is that, this is a rumor, that Carmelo Anthony may be willing to come off the bench. And that makes me so, so happy. I'm not saying that Melo should come off the bench. I'm just saying that the fact that he may be willing to just opens up a lot of possibilities for him and for his team. For a second, I thought he was about to go down the Allen Iverson route. If y'all don't remember, back in 2006 when Allen Iverson signed with the Memphis Grizzlies, they decided that they want Allen Iverson to come off the bench. Now, Allen Iverson was still a very decent NBA player, but they had players in their roster that they felt were more suited to start. And then you got that, that classic interview of Allen Iverson talking about how he shouldn't be coming off the bench. I don't know any franchise players that come off the um, 
the bench. I don't know any Olympian that come off the bench. I don't know any All-Star come off the bench. I don't know any former MVP that come off the bench. And that's kind of where it seemed like Melo was about to go. If you think about last year, they're like, AP, they think I should come off the bench. Just that whole thing, I just felt that he was going to let his ego get the best of him. But it seems like, if the rumors are true, he'd be willing to come off the bench. And I just think that is so great because we need somebody in that Western Conference to really compete with the with the juggernaut that is up there. So shout out to Melo. I hope this all works out. I'm still a little skeptical about him signing to that team or if they're going to change their offense to implement Melo. I don't know, but I'm excited to watch them play. We just got like six weeks left until we finally can. Next, we got rookie Michael Porter Jr. in the news because... Things are looking good for him. So he went through a second back procedure in July and he was interviewed the other day about it and he said, I finally feel like good. I don't have a date, but I'm hoping to be back in the beginning of the year. Got to heal up, but I feel great. I'm able to get on the court a little bit right now, do some different things, but my rehab has definitely been very conservative. They're really taking it easy with me, being patient with me. And then he went on to say that the first back surgery that he had just kind of helped the problem, but the second one was to completely fix it. And that is incredible. If the man could come back mid-October and feel completely fine, then all the teams that passed up on him Maybe questioning their decision if he turns out to be as good as people project he will be if he can stay healthy. I think it's incredible. As you can see from just a clip to the side, him having a shoot off of Trey Young. The stroke is looking good. I mean, he beat Trey Young in a three-point shooting contest. Very minute contest, but you see, you get what I'm saying. Uh, if he could come back, be healthy, the Denver Nuggets got a gym. And lastly, LeBron. And lastly, the Lakers plan on playing LeBron James just 33.5 minutes per game. And I say just. Because if you take a look at LeBron's workload throughout his entire career, he has always averaged over 35 minutes per game. 33.5 is still a lot of minutes, but for LeBron James, that would be a career low minutes per game. Something tells me that LeBron won't accept this. LeBron has always been a huge workhorse, and he pay, he pays so much money in the offseason, and he works so hard in the offseason for him to be ready for the 82-game grind plus the playoffs because, you know, LeBron always plays about 100 games a season. He always pays and works so hard in the offseason to keep his body ready. Some tells me even at the age of 34 that LeBron's going to be like, nah, I still want my 35 minutes a game. And before I wrap up the video, I'm going to go ahead and fulfill the most requested thing on my channel. And that's for me to give an upgraded version of my sneaker collection. In the background of all my videos, y'all may have noticed, it's, you know, just that. Some of my favorite sneakers I've owned, just part of my collection, but my favorite part. And um, I get asked often to show us what you buy when you buy it. But the thing is, over the past couple months, I really haven't been buying sneakers because I've been saving up for a car, a new car. I got that new car. So we're back on the sneaker collection grind, by the way. So the first thing that we picked up since buying a new car the royal ones baby the royal ones if y'all don't know the ones are my favorite shoe of all time you know so getting the royal ones was just a huge accomplishment for me i still want the band ones but i ain't got you know y'all look up how much that costs i'm not dropping that on a pair of shoes but i i'm so picky not picky cautious when it comes to buying sneakers because i won't buy them online because i live in an apartment building which means that the mailman will leave a box on the front porch and anybody can walk past and take my shoes so i don't order online so i have to go to a re what is it co-assignment shop something like that you know, they verify the shoes are real, then they sell it to you. So I had to drive very, very far to find these, but I did it and I got them. And secondly, I got my first ever pair of LeBrons, ever. I'm not a big LeBron shoe guy, but I saw these on a the sneaker app and I really liked them. I would never wear these with a pair, like, you know, with a normal outfit. These are hooping shoes, which means that Kenny is going to get it back in the gym because I'm kind of embarrassed, y'all. You know, I live on the second floor of my apartment. I was bringing up groceries the other day, and I was tired walking up those stairs. At 21 years old, I should not be tired walking up some stairs. So Kenny got to get back in the gym. And, of course, getting back in the gym means playing some basketball. You know, the cardio running up and down, up and down the court. So I will eventually get back in the gym. As you can see, I haven't even put these on yet. I don't even know if they fit me, but... I'm really excited to wear these at the gym. So let me know if you want to see me play against like my through the wire buddies, you know, 
Um, but that's pretty much it. I've been trying to find different shoes from those weird companies, you know, like Anta. I want a pair of Clay Thompson shoes. I want a pair of Dwayne Wade Lee Ming shoes. I just want to try like all the weird shoes. You know, we got the Jordans, we got the Nikes, the Adidas, and Under Armour basketball shoes. But I want to try like the Lee Mings, the Anta, the Peaks of the world. But it's so hard to find them here in America. I want to do a whole video just trying like weird NBA shoes. So y'all let me know if y'all want to see that. It's going to take me a while to get it produced, but if y'all want to see it, just let me know in the comment section. I'll work my hardest to get the shoes here. But that's pretty much it, man. Thank y'all. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're at this point, leave it a like because you had to like something, maybe. Yesterday, we dropped the newest episode of my podcast, Through the Wire. Um, if you have not listened to it, I recommend it. We had a huge debate about two players one a bona fide superstar and one an up and coming player who would you rather have and it got a little heated so if you like nice nba debates link is in the description i'll also leave a, a end card at it thank y'all so much this is kenny i'm out peace who who from the wizards backcourt is better than ben simmons what john wall i agree there <laughs> well, I, never, I never agree with that point <laughs> And Bradley Beal is better than J.J. Redick. I can agree with that, too. <laughs> so, he left off the five. <laughs> All right, so it's a three-man show now. <laughs>